about me is that I am an upstanding citizen. I come from a very upstanding family. There is nothing to hide in our family. And to prove that out, when I was two years old, my father accepted an offer to live in a fallout shelter, a glass fallout shelter, in the middle of the center mall in Omaha. <laughs> True. <laughs> and not only that, he brought along my mom, who was eight months pregnant, <laughs> and me, who was two, and the four of us, or the well, three and a half, the three and a half of us lived in that fallout shelter in that glass fish tank for a week. The week before Christmas. <laughs> we have nothing to hide. So imagine my surprise to find out that they wanted to arrest me for forgetting to pay a ticket. Well, that might not be true. They towed my car because I forgot to pay the ticket. And that's not all true either. <laughs> they towed my car because I was driving on a suspended license because I forgot to pay the speeding ticket. And that's the truth. <laughs> but I learned from that. I learned my lesson. I was not going to be caught that way again. I learned the lesson to the $134 ticket, to the reimbursing the towing company for towing my car, to the court cost. I learned my ticket. So a couple of months later when I got pulled over, or expired plates. <laughs> I knew exactly what to do. Now, expired plates was not my fault. My husband has one job to do and <laughs> he messed up. But I knew what to do and I went that day. In fact, I went that out. I went that minute and I turned around and I drove to Papillion and I got those plates renewed. And I went out and I wiped the plates down and I put my sticker on because I knew what to do now. So. Imagine my surprise when one morning my daughter calls and she says, Mom, there's a policeman at the door. He says, there's a warrant out for your arrest. I said, let me talk to him now. So they put the officer on the phone and he said, Mrs. Anglo, there's a warrant out for your arrest. What? I said, no, no. I went and got those tags renewed. That same day. He said, Mrs. Anglo, you forgot to pay the ticket. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, what do I do now? He said, well, if I were you, I'd go down to that station and I would pay that ticket immediately. Or, if you'd like, you can wait till Tuesday because that's amnesty day. And they'll throw out the lesser of the charges and you won't have to pay so much. I figured it out. So the next day on Friday, I didn't even go to work. I did not get dressed. I didn't go to my Toastmasters meeting. No way, no how. I was scared to death. Laid low all day Friday. Saturday morning came. I'm still in my pajamas. <laughs> I see two clean cut officer heads walk across my sidewalk. Oh my God. I said, babe, tell me those are not cops. Jeff tiptoed over to the window and said, ooh, they are. <laughs> well, I went right to the front door and I opened the door and there they were, two of Papillion's finest. And they said, Mrs. Anglo? I said, yes. Do you know why we're here? I said, I hear there's a warrant out for my arrest. <laughs> well, could you like to come in? <laughs> and they looked at each other kind of funny and came in. And I said, no, 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 no. I know this, I forgot to pay the ticket, but I'm waiting for Tuesday because it's amnesty day. And they looked at each other and they said, who told you that? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, the officer, I'll go and get his card. And I ran to the bedroom and brought his card out. And I said, officer, so and so, he said. And they said, he would have never told you that. Yes, he did. They said, ma'am, we need you to come with us. In the state of Nebraska, if there's a warrant out for your arrest and we find you, we're required to handcuff you and take you down to the station. I'm not going. <laughs> he said, ma'am, I think you best go get ready. You have to come to the station. And I went to the bedroom and I 
put my clothes on because it was Saturday morning, and I said, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. And I came down my hallway, and I went up to that young officer, the one that had that little cute bar right here. I was going to ask him if he had a dog bite. But I went up to him, and I said, does this make you feel good as a human? <laughs> he looked at the other, the other officer and said, ma'am, harassing a policeman is an offense in the state of Nebraska. <laughs> and, I, and I sat down and I said, I'm not going. And the little light bulb went off in my head and said, oh my God, resisting arrest. <laughs> he said, if you'd like, we'll wait till we get to the car and handcuff you. I said, seriously? I said, fine. We went outside on Saturday morning, 9 o'clock in my neighborhood. There is a policeman parked this way, and there's another policeman parked this way, because the felon's going to get away. <laughs> and they walked me out to the car. And then there, in front of all of my neighbors, had me spread eagle and put my hands behind my back on that car where they handcuffed me and helped me into the back seat of a police car. And I don't know how many of you know, and you probably won't admit it to me anyway, but there is no back seat in a police car. You just sit on the floor. There is not even a pad. So there I am in my neighborhood on a Saturday morning with my hands behind my back handcuffs, sitting on the floor of a police car with my eyes closed so nobody could see me. <laughs> <laughs> we drove the papillion, <laughs> drove into the police station. By the way, I'll, I'll get, you know how it goes. The garage door comes up, the police car goes in, the garage door goes down so that the felon doesn't get away. And I get out of the car and I've been crying and I've got boogers down here and my hands are back here. And I'm on the floor of the police car and he says, man, you need to get out. And I looked at him. <laughs> there was no way I could get out. So he helped me out. And I looked at myself and I thought, I'm being thrown in the tank. I am a fish out of water. This is not what I do. I walked up to the lady who was about to frisk me, and she said, them tears ain't going to help you none. <laughs> I forgot to pay my ticket. And they walked me over and gave me my jail shoes. And they led me down a hallway where I just kept my feet head to the ground and followed them. And they asked me to sit on this bench, and I sat, and he shut the door. And I leaned my head back and I opened my eyes. Oh my God, I was in a jail cell. There I sat in a jail cell. I couldn't believe it. I'm crying my eyes out when they came to get me and fingerprinted me and they had me stand this way for a mugshot and this way for a mugshot. And they brought me back to my cell where I'm crying and there was a little half wall here and a roll of toilet paper and I blow in my nose. <laughs> And I sucked in that toilet paper, and I knew for sure I had AIDS. <laughs> oh, God. Pretty soon they came and they said, Miss Bango, you can come with us. My husband was there to post bond, <laughs> get me out of jail. And they looked at me and they said, Your court date is two weeks from Saturday. Do not forget it, or you will be in jail for two weeks. Got in the car with my husband who was in all kinds of trouble for not putting those tags on my car. <laughs> and I said to him, how can I remember to be at jail? Or how can I remember to be at court? I can't even remember to pay a ticket. <laughs> I'm falling and crying. The next morning I woke up and I said, called the courthouse and I said, what can I do? I'm so afraid to forget this. And the lady said to me very nicely, you can come back on Tuesday. It's amnesty day. <laughs> <laughs>